We've been talking about Joe Biden and his slow decline for quite some time. Now, so is the rest of the world. We're going to check in with Australia and Saudi Arabia. We know that Saudi Arabia has had a lot of snubs both directions with this White House. And we're going to start off with this woman. Her name is Rita Panahi. She's over with Sky News. She's a contributor there. And she's somebody 46 years old from Australia, also has Iranian citizenship, American born Australian, a right winger, according to Wikipedia, okay, saying that she works for the Herald and News Corp Australia. And so, of course, she's going to have fun poking the needle at Joe Biden. Now, they did a lot of this with Donald Trump. And so I think it's okay to make fun of presidents. It's sort of necessary. You got to lampoon your officials who take themselves too seriously and think that they're almost messianic figures who can solve everything for the world. And so this is just natural course of business. It's politics. But what's different about this one is what they're making fun of Joe Biden about. They made fun of Trump for his orangeness, his hair. They made fun of Trump for his big ideas of uh, grandiosity, right? The, the, the concept that everything he touches is amazing. Right? All of those things are, are reasonable to make fun of somebody about, but they're not making fun of about those things with Joe Biden, about you know his hair or anything that's kind of superficial. It's a lot worse than that. Talking about his cognitive decline, here is... Rita. But first, let's quickly check in with the leader of the free world, who today had a, this important message to impart. Imagine had the tobacco industry been immune to, to being sued. Mm. Come on. In February, the families of nine. Okay. So she's going to break that down for us. Now, you know, Joe Biden, of course, I think is getting a little bit, uh, Confused with his wording, I don't think he meant to say prostitute. I think he meant to say prosecute. And then he just forgot the P word and then filled it in with being sued. And he actually made that switch pretty quickly. That's not too bad. Uh, bu -bu 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 being sued. Can't think of prostitution, prosecution, uh, being sued. Just swapped it out there, which, which is pretty good. I mean, you know, typically Joe Biden doesn't catch himself that way. But here is what Read Up is saying that really shows. <laughs> This is what he said, word for word. Imagine had the tobacco industry been immune to prostitute being sued. Come on. It's little wonder that he's become the subject of mockery around the world. Uh. Even the Saudis are doing comedy skits on the cognitively impaired president and his beep. Check this out. They are, yep. and we're going to go through that one in detail. So we're going to put a pin in that. I first saw this actually over on Twitter from this fella, Assad Sam Hanna. He posted this April 11th, and look at this, 5.3 million views. This is catching the, the waves on Twitter. Retweets, 6,479, 6, 113,000 likes. That, those are some serious numbers, folks. 5.3 million views on Twitter. And so this, you know, presumably um, a, a lot of those views are from the United States, but presumably, you know, these are also from other parts of the world where people are also lampooning the leader of the free world, as Rita called him. And there's been a lot of back and forth between the Saudis who produced this video through their state media and this administration in the White House. Let's break that down before we watch that clip. Here we can see from Business Insider, they tell us that the Saudi state TV aired a sketch mocking Biden as a forgetful, sleepy old man as the U.S.-Saudi relations hit new lows. And we learn a little bit more about this organization. It's called NBC. So apparently it's state funded from Saudi money. They've got a show called Studio 22 aired on Monday. They've got a character for Biden, sleepy, forgetful, wandering around, being tugged back by the likeness of Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, I don't know who the actor, I think it's a gentleman playing Kamala Harris. I think it's acting, so we can comment on that. Biden is then seen confusing Spain and Africa, forgetting Russian President Putin's name, mistakenly calling Harris first lady. The sketch ends with Harris's character dragging the sleeping Biden character off the stage. And so I went over to NBC Studio 22. Here's what it looks like. And it actually looks like a pretty fun show. It's a comedy, as you can see here, Ramadan 2022, two seasons of this. After their TV network goes bankrupt, a team of misfits decides to take the industry by storm, sparking a series of misadventures, rivalries, jealousy, and love. Sounds like a pretty decent show. <laughs> After a TV network goes bankrupt. Are they talking about CNN? I'm not sure who they're talking about. A team of misfits 
decides to take the industry by storm. Uh, jealousy and love. Well, we know what happened over there with CNN's former CEO. And so I, I poked around, you know, what type of show is this? You know, is this like a Fox News comparison, an MSNBC comparison? I don't know. It's a comedy show. And so you can see here, episode two has, you know, kind of an angry general. And, you know, what's funny about about comedy, you know, I'm not a comedian, of course, but what's funny about it is stuff can be funny in all cultures, in all situations. Like, for example, you know, we have we have movies and episodes here where we have angry generals and sort of scared soldiers <laughs> who, who look like exactly like exactly like this. And then we have down here, episode three, we have a gentleman sitting inside with sunglasses on, which I think is just funny in any culture. You know, it's like, what are you sitting inside with sunglasses for? You're inside. And it's a very colorful background and they're just chit chatting about whatever with some espresso. Looks like a great show. But we know, as we're going to see, that they are lampooning the president. And as I said, it's okay to lampoon the president. They lampooned Trump. He did funny things. He was a funny guy. But this is a little bit more serious. The Saudis are, are now, in addition to just joking on the president, well, they've been snubbing him for quite some time. We saw this one back November 2021. Flush with cash, Saudi snubs Joe Biden and sends a message. Joe Biden, and remember, this was back in November. This was pre-Ukraine situation. We've got President Biden sounded deeply frustrated. Inflation going up. Price of gasoline going up daily. Oil toxic for the White House. So he calls the Saudis and says, can you please uh, drill for more for us? And they didn't. Like, no, we're not going to do that for you. Why? A lot of this goes back to the Jamal Khashoggi thing. The entire, you know... Uh, sort of a debacle between the White House and their messaging on that story, uh, between the relationship with the Saudis. You know, Biden came out swinging on that. And, it, you know, many people might say, and I, I'm not you know, super, super familiar with the details on this story, but would say that Joe Biden was actually right, right? He's, he's actually right. He should have you know stood up and, and spoken out on behalf of Jamal Khashoggi, the journalist who was ultimately, I think, you know, dismembered by the Saudis, right? Awful, heinous thing, uh, heinous thing. But Joe Biden goes out, talks a big game, demonizing the Saudis, and then turns around and picks up the phone call. Hey, can you guys drill for oil for us? You, know, you, you, gotta, you gotta have some consistency on that thing. You know, even if the message was right, stand by the message. Don't call them and ask for help. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna badmouth somebody, you don't call them and ask for a favor. Like that's just human politics. It's life 101, but he can't figure that out for some reason. So the Saudis are not appreciative of his language towards them and they are declining calls. We talked about this on the channel. We fast forward from November. They declined to drill more. Fast forward to March 8th now. He calls there as the Ukraine crisis starts to heat up, says, oh, can you drill again? And they say, no. In fact, they don't even pick up his phone call. Right, who is that Biden again? decline how many times i got to just block him he he doesn't even know what he's calling for anyways decline the calls persian gulf monarchy signaled no they're not going to help the surging oil prices unless washington supports them elsewhere and they're not going to do that we saw this one also back from february saudi arabia rejects the biden plea to increase oil as the midterms occur so we've got november we've got february biden and we've got march month after month, just begging for more oil. And they just say, no, we're not going to do that. And so we see that it's just one snub right after the other. They think he's got no teeth and he's just a feckless leader. And they're not wrong about that. That's why they sponsor videos and skits like this. And we're going to watch what happens here. And I don't know, you know, I don't watch enough of the show, obviously, beyond what we've taken a look at here today to sort of dive in and understand who these characters are. These are recurring characters. Is this a Saturday Night Live thing? I do know that it looks like this guy who is playing Biden is sort of a comedian who does this. I'm going to show you a clip of him also doing this to Boris over from the UK. Let's watch. And so let's pay some extra attention to Kamala. Who's playing Kamala here? Thank you very much. I'm Today, not sure that... we're going to talk about the crisis in Spain. Yeah, we're going to talk about the crisis in Africa. Yeah, Russia. Yeah, Russia. And I want to talk about the so president I don't, I don't, of Russia. I don't think that that is a biological female, right? We're talking about actors here. I don't want to misgender anybody or presume anybody's gender. But I, you know, since these are actors, obviously... Uh, this is not Joe Biden, and that's not Kamala Harris. I, I think, I think that might be might be a, a, a fella. 
and we'll we'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah, Putin, yeah, Putin, Putin. Listen to me. I have very important message to you. The message is, <clears throat> and the president of China. Oh, I didn't finish Russia. No, sir. Thank you to correct me, first lady. Damn. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Clap to your president. Clap to your president right now. So I don't know. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was a, a biological male who was saving the president. And, you know, I don't know if there's a message there or, you know, other than it's just interesting that that's how they're playing our vice president and our president. Okay, so, all right, well, we'll just leave that one alone. Here, you can see, I think the same guy was doing this to the British Prime Minister. I think this is the same comedian. And now, right, they're, they're, they're mocking Boris Johnson from the UK. I guess is being weird and goofy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our conference with my colleague, Secretary of Defense of the United States. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Today, oh, that's Lloyd Austin. we're going to talk about this refugee. Very lovely refugee. Very, very lovely refugee. She has no home. Believe me, she has no home. Okay, so I, you know, I don't follow a lot of UK politics or anything like that, but I, you know, I don't know. Is that funny? I don't know if that's funny. Uh, I don't think so, but... You know, they're mocking other world leaders and, you know, what's, I, I think the key takeaway here is not whether it's funny or not. It's more about whether they're mocking characteristics that matter, like Joe Biden's competency. Okay, here they're making fun of Boris Johnson's hair. They made fun of Trump's hair. They made fun of Trump's orangeness, whatever. Here, they're making fun of Joe Biden's competency. He can't even speak or sputter out a sentence or an address world leaders appropriately. And then we see clips like this. Now, he, this is another one, which is just a little bit, it's a little Joe Biden, but if you break it down, you can really see what's happening here. And so he kind of just mashes all these things together. A pretty important hearing. Uh, Kamala is getting, you know, uh, kind of uh, skewered for, I think, not wearing a face mask shortly after this when she was inside palling around with a bunch of people. But here we've got Biden now issuing a statement saying that he was hanging out with the president of China, Xi Jinping, hanging out in the foothills of the Himalayas. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. What is it? I was in the foot, uh, foot, foot, excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with <laughs> Xi Jinping, traveling with him. I guess we traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. All right, so you can take a look at the new judge. We have Ketanji Brown Jackson, who got sworn in, and she's sort of looking at the ground like, good Lord, her face is, you know that face like this? It's that one. It's the one where she's just going, mm, man, this is pretty bad. Don't make any sudden movements. And so Kamala's looking, you can see her face right there. She's looking at, she's giving him the side eye, the side glance. She's, she's looking at him like, Oh gosh, I can't wait till you're out of here after the midterms. I can't wait to be standing there. I'm going to wreck this country so much faster than you are. And so a weird statement, but you can see what's happening here. Greg Price gave us the details on this as I was in the foothills of the Himalayas. Were you in the foothills of the Himalayas? You know, it's a pretty big mountain range. Or were you in a city like near the Himalayas or were you backpacking and mountain climbing and uh, sleeping in one of those hammocks that you hammer into the rocks. What was it, Joe? Were you, you know, traveling around the foothills with President Xi Jinping? Were you guys out there like roaming the countryside talking about dictatorial futures? I'm not sure. But then you can see that that's a different conversation. So he's sort of, you know, elevating that. Maybe he was just at a city, at an embassy somewhere, having a conversation with the president of China. Traveling with him. He said, I traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. That's a separate thought that Joe Biden just smashed into the same sentence. That's a separate conversation that he's having with himself at this moment, where he's talking about uh, when he was the vice president, he traveled a lot. And he's very proud of that. You know, he traveled all over. I was on airplanes all the time. Okay. And I saw a lot of things like the foothills of the Himalayas. And he says, I don't even know that number for a fact, but uh, what was I talking about? Anyway, so regardless of how we interpret Biden, 
America and the world are largely unhappy with him. You can see 538 gives us this poll update April 12th at 9.48 a.m. He's still in high disapproval rates, uh, basically, you know, kind of hovering in this 52% uh, disapproval range and has been there for quite some time. And so Joe Biden being mocked now roundedly by the rest of the world. We see there in Australia, we see Saudi Arabia, we see many people in other parts of the world also coming down on him because he seems to be losing his capabilities at a faster pace day by day. And we've still got like two and a half years left of this. It's gonna be a long one. I hope you join us as we continue to cover this. I would love it if you subscribed before you got out of here, shared this with a friend or family member, said, hey, come on over here. It's a good channel, I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. And it means a lot to sort of see that you appreciate the content enough to send it over to somebody and invite them over here. I appreciate it a lot. So I would love it if you left a like before you finally got out of here and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.